Yusef sets the alarm for four hours later when he anticipates the plane will be flying high over the Pacific Ocean. Yusef plants the bomb in a life vest pouch under his seat, a place ground crews are unlikely to inspect during the stopover in Cebu. Soon after, he gets off the plane and disappears. Four hours later, the time bomb under C-26K awakes the airline industry to a new kind of terrorism. Murat's confession confirms Pellegrino's suspicions. This is just the kind of sophisticated plot he has come to expect from Ramzi Youssef. But Pellegrino is still shocked by what Murad says next. PAL 434 was only a test, a dry run for a much larger terrorist plot that will kill thousands of airline passengers. FBI investigators find evidence of Youssef's meticulous planning on secret files on the laptop that he so desperately wanted his accomplice to retrieve. On the laptop computer found in the Joseph apartment building was a file which laid out a plan for five individuals using code names, individuals not mentioned on the plan, to uh, board about three planes each, two planes, a couple of people had three planes, planting bombs on the planes, uh, and then uh, returning back to their home, hoping when they planted the bombs and with the timing devices, if everything went well, uh, all bombs would go off within about a six hour time period. Uh, any more than one would have been, in, been an airline disaster. Um, so, you know, if they were 50% successful in their plan, I think it would have scared a lot of people for a long time. The file on Youssef's laptop reveals that the plan, codenamed Bojinka, is foiled with no time to spare. The bombing of 12 American planes is meant to kill 4,000 passengers. Youssef's campaign of terror against the airlines is scheduled to start less than two weeks after the bust of his bomb factory in Manila. By the time Pellegrino and the FBI team arrive in the Philippines, Youssef is long gone. So it was a worry and it was a, a missed opportunity. Um, but we, we also, on a lot of these fugitive type cases, uh, you know, we're all not that different. and Everybody goes home. Everybody needs to go home. And uh, so the investigation again would focus back uh, to Pakistan. The FBI immediately begin a publicity campaign in Pakistan, promoting their $2 million reward for assistance in arresting Youssef. The strategy works. Youssef's latest recruit for yet another airline bombing blows the whistle. On the day Youssef is due to leave his hotel in Islamabad, a Pakistani SWAT team moves in. In Yusuf's room are Delta and United Airlines flight schedules, as well as bomb components hidden in children's toys. In a convoy of federal and local patrol cars, Ramzi Ahmed Yusuf was brought into New York City late Wednesday night, ending a worldwide manhunt. He was arrested Tuesday in Pakistan by Pakistani authorities and brought back by the FBI on a U.S. plane then into custody with heavy security on the street in case of any terrorist attacks prompted by his arrest. At his trial a year later in New York's Southern District Court, Youssef decides to handle his own defense against the advice of the judge. 
He performs better than expected, but he is found guilty on all charges related to the bombing of PAL-434 and conspiring to bomb 12 American passenger planes. Youssef is also found guilty in a second trial for the World Trade Center bombing. In his final summing up, Youssef justifies his actions. Yes, I am a terrorist and proud of it. And I only support terrorism so long as it's against the United States government and against Israel, because you are more than terrorists. Although Pakistani, Youssef describes himself as Palestinian by choice. And he justifies the PAL-434 and World Trade Center bombings as punishment for a U.S. foreign policy that favors Israel over Palestine. And hypocrites! For both crimes, he's sentenced to 240 years in prison. The judge recommends solitary confinement for life in the most secure prison in the United States, located in Florence, Colorado. It houses the country's most violent and dangerous prisoners, and it's where Youssef will spend the rest of his life, confined in a cell for up to 23 out of every 24 hours. We cannot uh, afford to uh, just sit down and uh, uh, count our victories with the arrest of uh, Ramzi Youssef. Somebody else has already replaced him and somebody else is already thinking of how to circumvent these uh, security measures that we put up. In the year following Youssef's attack on PAL-434, the Federal Aviation Administration certified a machine to detect explosives. Not one American carrier bought it. Only after 9-11 was a law passed that required U.S. airports to deploy explosive detection systems. But the most reliable models are expensive or too slow and still not widely employed. Well, they were saying 